Hello, it's Keith here, and this is the ninth in the platform specific series of my 68000 programming tutorials. Now, recently we've been looking at how to do joysticks on various systems, and this time we're going to be looking at the Neo Geo. This lesson's actually going to be pretty quick because the Neo Geo makes it very easy for us. In all of our tutorials, whether it's on the 68000, whichever system within that platform, or on the Z80 or 6502, we're reading our data in, into a common format. We're going to use one byte on the 8 bits and two bytes on the 16 bits, and we're going to have up in bit 0, then down, left, right, three fire buttons, any kind of start button, and then any extra buttons in the second byte. So that's what we're going to be aiming for when we read in today, and any conversion we need to do will be done accordingly. We're going to have a little example program. Let's see it now. So here's the example program running today, and all it does is it runs this command called read controls dual. This reads in both of the joysticks. Then we're calling the monitor to show the results, and the results are stored in D0 for the first player and D1 for the second player. So if I press up here, I've got joystick one up, down, left, right, and then fire one, fire two, fire three, fire four, and I think we've got a start button, there it is, and up, down, left, right, fire one, fire two, fire three, fire four, and the second start button there. So we can control both joysticks and we can just read those in. And you can see that the way this software works is that if a button is pressed down, the bit is zero. If the button is not pressed down, then the bit is one. So that's what we're going to be getting to. And it's going to be this read controls dual function that we're going to be looking at today, which is actually going to do all of the work. So how do we actually access the hardware on the Neo Geo? Well, curiously, we actually have two choices. We can either go directly to the hardware in these ports, starting with a three here. So we've got 38 quadruple zero here, which will allow us to read in the select and starts and also the card insertion on the arcade machines. And we also have an alternate port, which starts with a one here, one zero FDAC. And this is actually a BIOS port. So this is being controlled by the interrupt handlers, I guess, and the values are being written into here. The slightly odd thing is that the combination of the bits is actually inverted. So if you read indirectly from the hardware from this port starting with three, then a bit one will be a button that is not pressed and a zero will be a button that's pressed. If we read in from the BIOS, it's the other way around. The code we're gonna look at today actually does both. Now, when I wrote Grime 68000, I was reading from the BIOS, but I always prefer to go directly to the hardware. So I've written the code now to do both. We can just switch it on or off, depending on the definition of a symbol. So we're gonna look at the both of those. Now, there are some slight differences between the arcade and the home version, the AES and the MVS. The home version has a select button, the arcades don't, and also the home version doesn't have a coin slot. So those are some slight differences there that it's just worth bearing in mind if you're trying to fully control the hardware and if you were trying to create your own arcade version, for example, you would need to read in from the coin slots and things, but that's not something we're gonna be looking at today. So here's the code that's going to be doing the work for us today. You can see we've got this command read controls dual, which we've already discussed. And we're going to be using this definition called use BIOS here, NeoJoy use BIOS. If this is defined, we're going to use the BIOS functions. If it's not defined, we're going to use the direct hardware addresses. Now, as I've said, I don't think it actually makes any difference which one you use, but maybe there is some time that it becomes important. And it was very easy for me to support both. So that's what I've done. Now, we've got a function here called read controls one. Now, what this does is it processes the input and we'll have loaded in the select buttons into D3 and the players buttons into D4. And this function that we'll look at in just a moment is actually gonna switch around the controls into the right positions we need for that standardized format that I've already discussed. Because as I said, we're going to be outputting into this format here, but as I said before, the start's actually in a totally different register. So we're gonna have to shift that into this position here and move all of the fire buttons around accordingly. So we're going to load in select and start into D3, although we don't actually use select in these. And then we load in first joystick one into D4 and then joystick two later on. And as you can see, we're using different ports just depending on whether we're using the BIOS or not. But it's this read controls one that is doing all of the work of converting that data. And so what does it do? Well, the first thing it does is it takes only the lowest byte of D4. Now D4 is up, down, left and right. And the only thing we want to do first is we want to get rid of button D the reason for that is fairly simple. The top bit of our defined format is the start button, but the top bit of the red in data is button D. So we want to get rid of button D temporarily, but we'll bring it back in just a moment. Now what we want to do is we want to get the start button. Now the start button is the rightmost bit of the data that we read in from either 38 quadruple zero or 10 FDAC. You can see it just here. So we're just gonna pop that in in its place. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to rotate one more bit, and that's because we want to get rid of the select. 
Now, we read this in once, but we run read control one twice. And the reason for that is the second time we want to run it, we want these two bits to be at the far right because we then want the start button for player two the second time we run it. And so that's why we're skipping over the select just here. Now, once we've done that, what we need to do next is we need to get that button D back. Now, we rotated the button D into here in D2 here. And so now we just shift that to the left to the eighth bit, effectively the first bit in the second byte, just here. So we're loading it into this fire four position just here. And then finally, all we need to do is we need to flip the bits if we're reading in the BIOS because the bits from the BIOS read red settings are backwards for what we want because we want a button down to be zero and a button up to be one. The BIOS does it the other way. Now, if we've not got the BIOS, all we need to do is set all the unused bits, including any fires above four, because we don't have a fire five, six, seven, or eight. I mean, we could have loaded in the select there, but this example doesn't do that. So we're just marking all those unused bits to one, just in case our testing code, because this is designed for common code, is reading those joystick fires that don't exist. And that's really all there is to it. So reading in the joystick from the Neo Geo is very straightforward, actually. Now, one interesting thing to note is that according to the documentation, the Neo Geo can, in theory, have another two joysticks. These have different ports, and you can see the addresses here. To my knowledge, they can only be read in through the BIOS. I'm guessing there's some quite complex encoding. They're probably using some kind of um, encoding with the other ports somehow. But uh, as I say, these aren't something that I think may even support. So I'm not sure what games use them. Uh, maybe it's just for very weird Mahjong games or something like that. So it's not something we're covering here, certainly. Uh, if you really want to try looking into it, then you know, just bear in mind that in theory, it can support four. And you can see there's a third and a fourth select and start here. So I say it's something that's there, but it's not something that's within the scope of these tutorials. Anyway, I hope you found this lesson quite interesting. You know, if you enjoy your Neo Geo, we're going to be looking at another system next week. We're going to be looking at the Sinclair QL. It's going to be quite a challenge doing the joystick on the Sinclair QL because there isn't a joystick on the Sinclair QL. So we'll be, in fact, reading the keyboard and using that in the same way to simulate a joystick. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.